Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are going to discuss what happens when you have more values to choose from than the positions to be filled. Okay, so five friends want to go to a party. When you reach the party, it's an exclusive dinner and what you realize is that you guys are five but there's only three chairs left. So what happens is, in the first chair, there are five choices. In the second chair, there is four choices because one person sat down and there are now four choices. In the third chair, one person sat down again and now you have three choices. So our final answer is 5 times 4 times 3 which is equal to 60. What I'm trying to show you is that you could not do this. You can't do that. So you can't say 5 factorial. The number of possible arrangements is not equal to the number of positions you have and there is no repetition. When would we use this rule is when we say, hey, you know what, we have more options than we have positions. Like in this case, you had five options, but you only had three positions. What you could do, the formula to use would be n factorial over n minus r factorial. So if you take it, we had 5 factorial over. We had 5 and we only had 3 positions factorial, which is equal to 5 times 4. Now what's 5 minus 3? It's 2. So we have 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 factorial over 2 factorial. The 2 factorial will cancel out and look we left with 5 times 4 times 3. Now you can use the formula as they give it here or you can simply put in it manually as I had positioned it here. You'll see that a final answer looks exactly the same 5 times 4 times 3. Now there's one more thing you can do since we have really nice clever calculators. There is a button that looks like this. It is called permutation. What it says is if you have the position the n represents how many options you have and the r represents how many positions you have. So if you had pressed this into your calculator so you will key in 5 then you press shift permutation 3 and you would still end up with 60. It doesn't matter again which method you use. You will get all your marks. But you must remember this button is used specifically when we have a different amount of options, the amount of arrangements we have. Okay, let us take the next example. It says, how many four digit numbers can be made from the digits 1 to 7? Now we know obviously there is a change, so it's a permutation. We have seven options. In each digit they can basically start with 7. But we only have four positions. So it would be you would key in 7 then the permutation button and 4 because that is the only amount of spaces you have and the answer would equal to 840. But you could have also done it like this. For our first position we have 7 then we have 6 then we have 5 then we have 4 and if you multiply it you will get 840. And last you could use the formula. which is equal to 7 factorial over 7 minus 4 factorial, which is equal to 7 times 5 times 4 times 3 factorial over 7 minus 4 is 3 factorial. Again, giving us the same answer. Now, my favorite is by far the manual method. I feel safe and confident when I'm using this method because the questions get very tricky sometimes. And this method makes me think and say, okay, I'm doing this correct. Now let's go to an example that you had done earlier. If you look at this question, it says a password has to be made and you can use the 26 letters of the alphabet, but we have no repetition. Now what is it? We have 26 letters. That is the amount of choices we have, but we only have two positions. For the numbers, we have 10 options, but again for the positions, we only have 3. Now if you press that in your calculator, you would get 468,000. 
Can you see that? If you were doing it for the second question where we had limited, we had no vowels and we could not use zero. We had only 21 options, but again our positions was only two times. For the numbers, we only had nine options, but our positions again was only three. And if you used your calculator, you would come up with the same answer. Thank you for watching.